Hello, my name is Skylar Judd, and today I will be telling you about the novel Friday Night Lights. The author of Friday Night Lights is Buzz Bissinger. His nonfiction story about football was published in 1990. The title of this novel is really understanding to me because I play football, but for the people out there that don't really follow sports or that don't typically care for sports, the title Friday Night Lights comes from the day that the football team plays on and they play under the, under the lights, usually starting at around 7 o'clock. If you don't know who Buzz Bissinger is and you enjoy sports books, he is definitely someone I would recommend. If you want to read a great sports novel, he has another book called The Classic Mantle, and it is a baseball novel telling the story of Mickey Mantle's unforgettable career. But if you are looking for a good football novel, I definitely recommend Friday Night Lights. In a shortened version, because I don't want to ruin the whole book for you, just in case you're wanting to read it, but Friday Night Lights is a story of talking about the Permian High School Panthers football team out of Odessa, Texas. The team was very well routed in all aspects of the game. Offensively, they were explosive and could score touchdowns at any given play. They had a defense that could stop the greatest of all offenses, and overall, they just had players who fought as hard as they could every snap of the ball, and they planned on going and winning state that year. They were that good. The 1988 team had the mojo spirit that was scripted to win the state championship. They had the slogan, going to state in 88. One of the keys to victory lay in celebrated running back Bobby Miles. Bobby Miles was taken from his father and put in a foster home when he was only seven years old. Bobby was rescued by his uncle, L.V. Miles, who raised him and taught him to play football. Major college programs watched him as his senior year approached. His academic record was so poor, though, that he probably would have to set out a year if he was accepted into a major college. But none of the football coaches cared. Bobby Miles was born to play. But in a preseason tournament, or a little scrimmage, disaster struck. He went down with a leg injury. It turned out to be more than a sprained ligament, and it would require surgery, and he would be out for at least a month. But the bigger question that everybody was wondering, would he be able to come back and have the same explosiveness and the same fire? Because once you're hurt, most, most people, they never come back the same. Bobby Miles' recovery and his return is a major part of this story. Coach Gary Gaines comes across as a gifted teacher who rarely, rarely raises his boys, but managed to produce huge victory in Odessa. The pressures on any Texas high school coach are enormous, but in Odessa, they are doubled. Nothing less than going to state is acceptable. Coach Gaines' team did the unthinkable. They lost a conference game. He and his family were the immediate recipient, recipients of for sale signs that were staked into his lawn. They got a letter from the editor calling him a dismissal and the second guessing of an entire town. The climax moment of this book comes down to a coin toss among three coaches that were tied for first in the conference. But only two can move on. I would go on and tell you some more, but if you're wanting to read that book, it will definitely ruin things for you. The story is pretty unique on the way that it is presented because throughout the whole book, there is not a single authorial I. He uses an omniscient point of view that removes him completely from the story, but it yet allows him to overhear and report the team and town's most important details. Thank you for listening.